Hello everyone, my name is Brian Deere and this is a tutorial on how to do sidechain compression using Logic Pro. Uh, I'm currently using Logic Pro 10, however the techniques shown here will also work with Logic Pro 9 and 8. Uh, so as you see I have a basic track set up here, or a basic project. So let's go ahead and listen to what it is. There's uh, no sidechain compression being used at all, so here we go. Okay, so just a basic uh, trance bass line along with some pads uh, and a kick drum. So let me go ahead and show you the reason for sidechain compression. If you're not aware, sidechain compression uh, is used to uh, basically clean up your mix. So it helps get things out of the way. Uh, so in the case of the kick drum, I'm going to go ahead and open up the channel EQ. Uh, I already have this EQ'd a little just because I use it, I've, I'm using this in one of my own tracks now, uh, but the EQ settings are really not important. What is important is what's actually happening. So let's look at the analyzer. Uh, so if you don't know already, just click this analyzer button and let's start the track. Okay, so you can see that the primary frequencies happening there are between 50 and 100 hertz. Uh, and now let's go ahead and look at the bases. Now, if you look at the bases, I have some, I'm using something in Logic 10 called uh, Track Stacks, which is essentially a way of busing uh, individual tracks. If you don't know what any of that means, it's not really important. Um, you can just treat these as two separate bass tracks. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the sub bass. The sub bass is. Uh, let's solo it so you can hear by itself. And then if you add in the arpeggiated bass line, uh, it'll sound like this. Okay, now the arpeggiated bass line, just so you know, I do have a, a few effects going. I have um, a tape delay. Uh, the one from FabFilter is fantastic, uh, but that's not important for the demonstration. But if you're interested in how that sound um, is being made. It's, it's using a, a tape delay. Uh, and then I have a, a tiny bit of reverb added as well. Okay, so you saw the sub bass, or you, you heard the sub bass. So now let's go ahead and open the channel EQ for just the sub bass. The analyzer's on. And so at the top right, we have the kick. In the bottom right, we have the sub bass. And make note of the frequencies of both. So I'm going to solo the sub bass and the kick. Okay, so you can see that the sub bass and the kick are almost at identical frequencies. Uh, the sub bass is a little over 50 hertz and the kick is between 50 and 100. So that could pose a big problem um, for every downbeat, for example, the kick and the sub bass are going to be competing for, uh, competing for your ear. So in mixes, the problem with that is the more things you have on the same frequency, they start to muddy each other at, or get very muddy, uh, which is the reason why a lot of amateur mixes don't sound very good. It's because they EQ uh, and then they have a lot of things that are competing on the same frequency. Well, side chaining solves that problem. So to do side chaining, it's a pretty simple process. So I'm gonna walk you through on how I do it. Uh, and there's no real wrong or right way to do this. You can change this procedure to suit your way of working, but this is a fairly standard way of doing side chaining. So the first thing you need to do is go to your kick. And with your kick, you're going to need to create a send. So let's go ahead and create the send. I tend to put all my kicks on bus three. Just That's just the way I work. You can put it on any bus you want, but I like to have it on the same bus every project so I don't have to think about where my uh, sidechain kick is going to. So we have bus three, and now let's go ahead and turn bus three, the send all the way up. And then now at bus three here, um, I'm going to turn the stereo output off. So now we still have the same kick, and it's not being doubled. Okay, so now bus three is receiving the signal from the kick. 
So now we need to put that um, now we need to put that signal into the sidechain compression. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use bases. That's the arpeggiated baseline and sub bass together. So both of those tracks are actually going through bases here. So I'm going to add a compressor. Um, so go to dynamics, compressor, add the compressor. So now let's solo the bases with the, the kick. Okay, not much change. Um, obviously there's compression on the bass, but it's still, the frequencies are still competing. So at the top right, notice there's a side chain selection. We put it on bus three. So now the kick signal is going into the bass compressor. So let's go ahead and play that. Now, if you notice the gain reduction uh, is happening with each of the kick drum kicks or each of the kick drum uh, sounds. Um, however, this doesn't really sound that much different. So I'm going to make this a lot more dramatic. I'm going to lower the release time. And what that release time does is it it's the speed that the compressor stops working. So it will um, it won't hold the compression as long. Uh, it's generally good to have a short release time when you're using side chaining. Uh, and then I'm going to lower the threshold. And that essentially means that the compressor is going to kick in sooner. Uh, or more powerfully. Uh, so let's go ahead and start it and see what we hear. Now if you hear that, you can hear there's a, a bit of a pulsing sound that's happening in the bass. Now what I do is I have a preset that I created uh, called Sidechainer, and that's generally my starting point for most of my projects. Uh, for sidechain compression. Uh, so here, here's the, the sidechain again. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the kick and you can hear it without it. You hear the difference? The bass is now being pushed out of the way by the kick. So what that means is even though the bass is on the same frequency as the kick, they're no longer competing for the same space. Uh, so that's really awesome. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this with a pad sound. Uh, now, with pads, let's go ahead and solo these pads so you can hear. Okay, and we're going to look at the uh, channel EQ so you can see the analyzer. Now, I already did quite a bit of low cut um, with all my mixes pretty much I low cut everything. Um, I don't want any extra frequencies getting in the mix that uh, shouldn't be there. So let's look at the analyzer. Okay, so you can see that there's really no competition with the uh, kick and the bass. However, for creative effect, you can use side chaining as well. And on pads, it's especially, um, especially powerful. So let's go ahead and do this again. We're going to add a compressor. We're going to set the side chain to bus three. And I'm going to go ahead and drop into my preset. And I'm going to lower the gain a bit. And here we are. Okay, so still no change because the kick is silenced. So let's add the kick and hear what it does. So that uh, sound that you hear in a lot of uh, trance, progressive house, um, electro records, that pulsating sound, that's usually caused, or not caused, but that's usually from side chaining. Uh, so that's how side chaining would work on a pad sound. And what's interesting is you can adjust it creatively depending on what you're trying to go for. So I'm going to play, um, play the track as it is, and I'm going to adjust the compressor threshold so you can hear the difference. So really the only limit is your creativity and what you're trying to do. So uh, with uh, side chaining pads, you can do a lot of cool stuff. You could side chain anything you like, actually. If you want, you can do vocals, uh, which gives a pretty interesting effect. Um, I've heard lead sounds that have been side chained. 
Um, and if you want to get even more funky with things is if you have a, an instrument, let's say it's a, a, a hi-hat or some other instrument that's firing on the upbeat, you can actually sidechain off the hi-hat uh, or side chain off anything on the upbeat and give an opposite effect. Uh, so you can do a lot of cool things. You don't just have to side chain from the kick. You can side from other side chain from other instruments. Okay, now there's a problem though with what we have so far. Um, if you look at my kick pattern, you can see in the last two notes of the of the eight bar loop that I don't have a kick sound. Um, and, you know, you might have a kick drum that cuts out for a few bars for whatever creative effect you're trying to go for. Um, however, the problem is when the, the kick drum goes away, so does the side chain. So let's listen to it and listen especially to the pad sound. And you can hear, um, you can hear what I'm talking about. So listen carefully to the pad through this, this progression. So you hopefully heard that, but what happened is the side chaining stopped on the pad um, for the last two beats. So the way I solve this problem is every time I start a new project, I will create a new track. And this can be, this needs to be a software instrument track. Um, or alternatively, what you can do is you can actually bounce the kick to audio. Um, but that's not as effective because you still have the problem with the two, two beats missing. So I like to create an entirely new track, um, software instrument. Okay, we'll close all this stuff. Uh, we don't need any, we don't need these sends here. Okay, and now I'm gonna just open up an ultra beat. Okay, now with this ultra beat, um, we have a kick drum here. Okay, it's not my favorite kick. Um, and it really doesn't matter because you're actually not gonna hear it. Uh, we're going to have the track silenced, um, but either way, it just it bothers me to have that kick. So I'll uh... okay, that that kick sounds a lot better. So what I'm going to do now in Ultra Beat, it's really simple. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to add it for every downbeat. Oh, actually, um, I need to select the kick I'm using. Okay, now I'm going to add it on every downbeat, and I'm going to start the sequencer just so you can hear it's there. Okay, that's pretty ugly. Uh, I think we might have something. Yeah, it looks like I have another kick here. So I'm just gonna clear these out. Uh, alternatively, if you need to clear a pattern in Ultra Beat, you can come down here and then right click and then just do clear. Um, that's a faster way to do it. Okay, so now let's play it. All right, we got we have the um, we have the kick drum there. So let's. Um, Take the pattern from Ultra Beat. We have something here, it's called Custom Kicks. So I'm gonna rename this to Sidechain. And then down here at Pattern, you can drag the pattern up. And let's just go ahead and put it where I need it. Okay, close this. And now we have a kick that's firing on every beat, even if the real kick, that's the one that's in the song, is not. Okay, so now we have the Sidechain track. I like to put it at the very top because it's really a non-musical part. And then I also like to change the color. So you can do the color change. Um, yeah, name and color. And let's just um, show hide colors. You can also do, um, I think it's option C or control C to show the colors. So we're just going to make this, I usually make it a dark color that stands out of the way. Um, I guess that one works. Okay, and that just reminds me that it's not a musical element, but it's important. So now we have the kick firing out on bus three. So I actually want to get rid of that. And now with side chain, I'm going to send that to bus three. Right. So now with this, we have the side chain kick going to bus three. And then we also need to turn the stereo output to off. Otherwise, we're going to be left with two kick drums. And that's not really a good idea. Okay, so now let's listen. And if you remember our um, 
our compressor is still set to side chain on bus three, so we don't need to change anything there. Here we go. Okay, for some reason it doesn't sound like we're hearing anything, right? So let's try to figure out why. Okay, it looks like it's happening. Let's look at, oh, here's why. We need to turn the send all the way up on bus three, so it's actually sending signal. So let's go ahead and try this again. Okay, and that works. Now let's mute the original kick and you can still hear that it's happening. Okay, pretty awesome. So what I like to do is um, when I'm working on a track is I'll, I'll essentially zoom out and I'll just make that kick cover the entire track. So I'll just um, put it at one and just let it go through the whole way. Okay, now there may be some cases that you don't want side chaining. Maybe you have a breakdown section and you don't want the pads to be pulsating. Um, you don't want the bass pulsating. If that's the case, then you can treat this just like any other MIDI region. So in this case, I'm going to, um, I'm going to put a little break from the side chain. Okay. So now this section here from 57 to 65 will be without sidechain. Um, so you can use this as creatively as you like. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's sidechain compression. Let's go ahead and hear the, the pattern, the first part of the pattern again. Okay, that's actually another part of the, the pattern. But anyway, you get the idea. So Hopefully this was a clear introduction to how side chaining works and how you can use it. Um, what you should have learned is important thing is remember you want to send your kick to ascend and then in the compressor you want to uh, make that compressor side chain uh, should be coming from that send. And then as a another uh, another tool you can also create a new track specifically for the side chain just be sure to mute that track. By muting, I mean actually setting the output to no output. Uh, and that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave comments. Uh, and thank you very much for listening.